Hi, my name is Marlene. I'm an abstract painter and I'm so glad you joined me for this video. Um, we're going to talk about the mysteries of abstract art. I know, I know. What are all those scribbles and those big blocks of color all about? And I mean, I've even seen videos of elephants uh, painting and I've seen videos of people throwing paint in front of fans and having it splattered everywhere. <laughs> and I mean, that sounds like a lot of fun, but actually there's a lot more to abstract art than what you might think. I actually find painting um, using abstraction as actually a way to uh, express myself, um, express myself without words, if you will. And I know that might sound a little bit strange, but I'm really hoping through this, this video and the series of videos that I have coming up that we're actually going to be able to make some art together and learn a little bit more about what's behind making abstract art. In fact, there are clues that the abstract artist uh, leaves for you, any artist actually leaves for you. And um, these clues, for the lack, you know, lack of a better word, are called um, the seven elements of design. And today we're going to uh, try out two of them um, through a couple of exercises. So let's get going, shall we? So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to get yourself the biggest piece of paper that you have around the house. And all you're going to need for the beginning part of this exercise is something to draw with. So a pencil or a marker. I'm just going to pick you know, one of my favorite pencil crayons here, okay? And again, this is, might be a little bit strange, but uh, bear with me. What we're gonna do is we're gonna close our eyes and we're gonna tune into how we're feeling right now. And all I want you to do is reopen your eyes and put your pencil or your marker down on the paper. Use the whole paper, go really quickly, don't overthink it, and just express how you're feeling right now. And stop. <laughs> All right, I don't know if you can tell what I was feeling. I'm feeling a little anxious because I'm in front of the camera, which is not something that I normally do. All right, so let's keep moving. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new bottom. So you're gonna turn your piece of paper so that you now have a new bottom. It doesn't really matter, or a new top. Keep the same pencil. And I'm gonna give you a feeling this time, okay? So last time we just kind of tuned into how we were feeling. This time I'm gonna give you a word. So again, if you want to, you can close your eyes just to really think about how that feels in your body. And the word I'm gonna give you is joy, okay? Joy. So how does happy or joy feel in your body? And again, just scribble. Don't worry about what it looks like. Don't think about it too much, just scribble. Joy. And stop. <laughs> We're going quick, we're not overanalyzing this. Okay, one more time, let's turn the paper so that we have again another new top or bottom. Same marker, one more word. Let's try calm, okay, calm. Again, don't overthink it, just feel what it feels like to have calm. Make calm marks, in other words. And stop. Ta-da! <laughs> I actually really enjoy doing this because it, it really helps me to kind of like move emotions through my body. So the next step is really easy. Um, I invited you in our list of supplies to get a playlist together. So if you're working virtually with someone at home, maybe you can share playlists, or if you've got your family members around you, you can all pick a favorite tune, maybe three or four tunes on your playlist, something that's um, really relaxing and fun or, or whatever, just something that you enjoy, music you enjoy. And then you're gonna get some of your favorite coloring uh, materials out. So you can use things like uh, oil pastels, or like I have these lovely pencil crayons over here or markers oh yeah I've got these ones I really like these ones these ones are really um, vibrant and kind of fun so crayons markers whatever and you're simply gonna put your music on and you're gonna color all right so um, look at all these wonderful shapes that we have here so just pick a shape and pick a color and just kind of go for it and I know, okay, you know, coloring, but there was a huge craze about coloring not that long ago. In fact, there still is um, all these coloring books for adults. And there's real science behind the, 
you know, the practice of coloring because coloring is actually quite meditative and relaxing. And so this is uh, something that we can kind of do with the music on and with our friends and family. We can just spend a bit of time coloring in. And, you know, I'm a little bit of a radical because I'm an abstract painter. So if you want to, you can even like add some more shades <laughs> and more color to your piece of paper. You can go outside the lines. You can do whatever you want. Oh, there's another idea too. You can, um, instead of coloring the, the shape right in, you could make little marks or something within a shape, you know? That might be kind of fun. Just doodle away. Or even just outline a shape, outline a color. Follow one of the lines. Just let the music guide you, have some fun, press pause on this video, and then we'll get back together again because I want to uh, share with you uh, a really important um, tool that we're gonna learn from this exercise of what abstract artists and all artists actually use to convey ideas through their art. Welcome back. Um, I hope you had some fun coloring and through TV magic, I finished mine really quickly. Actually, I'm kind of lying. I did this the other day. <laughs> um, but I wanted to point something out. I wanted to point out, um, I'd like to take a little bit of time before we move on to the next exercise to actually look at these lines. And you can look at the lines that you did and you can look at the lines that your sister or your mom or your friend, you can take a picture of your, um, your art and send it to each other if you're working virtually. And just take a look at some of the lines and see if you can figure out what that person was feeling. Like, so I have some big circular uh, pieces here in this one, and I'm pretty sure that that's when I have been thinking or feeling, um, you know, the idea of joy. And I know that there's some uh, lines that are kind of going across uh, the page here, and I know that that was when I was sort of feeling the idea of calm. And then this stuff here in the middle, which I actually darkened in, was a little bit more sort of jaggedy lines, a little tighter together, a bit more, uh, you know, scribbly. Uh, that's when I was kind of feeling nervous or anxious because I'm talking in front of a camera and it's not something I'm used to doing. So take a look at yours and take a look at your friends and see if you can kind of figure out if the lines are speaking to you because that's what they're doing. That's what an abstract artist does. Line is actually one of the tools or one of the clues that they use to convey um, an idea behind their artwork. So if you come across a piece of artwork and it has lots of tight scribbly lines, you're probably gonna you know, notice that maybe that person was feeling anxious or angry. If there's big swoopy circles, then maybe it's a painting or a piece that's all about kind of joy. I would highly recommend that you set up a space in your house for this kind of exercise, okay? So even just a spot where anybody can go if they're feeling a little bit overwhelmed right now or just a little anxious or got a lot of nervous energy. This is a really great exercise to get that energy through and it's fun and relaxing. You can put your earbuds on and you can just be all by yourself if you wanna do it. But just set up a space so it's super easy where you can just color and draw and scribble. All right, so let's move on to the next exercise and we're gonna to need to get uh, the equipment out for, um, yeah, for exercise too. So um, maybe put the stuff away and we'll pause for a moment and grab all the rest of the stuff that we need to, um, to do some more work in and around lines. Okay, so now we have our new set of supplies. And like I said on our list, you can use just scrap pieces of paper, like ma you know magazines or newspapers or whatever you have around the house. I'm gonna use a piece of paper so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Um, and then something dark, like some dark paint. If you don't have paint, don't worry about it. You can use a big variety of like markers or um, crayons or pencil crayons. Try to just scrounge around the house to find things that are thick and thin, things that are like a little bit drier texture. Uh, just so that you have a bit of variety. Because what I want you to do is I want you to play with all of these tools. And like I said in my instructions, if you don't have fancy art tools, it doesn't matter. Just look around the house. I'm sure some, you've got some paintbrushes around somewhere, maybe in the shop or whatever. Uh, you can use things like Q-tips. Um, I often use uh, palette knives, but you know, look at this. I mean, you can scrounge around in, in your kitchen even. This is one of those butter knives that nobody ever really knew, you know, uses. It's not very sharp or anything. So let's try painting with that today. Um, chopsticks are another option, sponges, things like that. Okay, so 
All we're going to do is we're going to put on our second playlist. And this playlist, it's really important that you have it as random as possible. So maybe give everyone in the household the job of picking out a song. Or if you're, again, working virtually with someone, just share playlists, like, you know, uh, surprise your friend with a playlist. I'd like you to have as much variety as possible. So think about classical, pop, hip hop, even country. Um, think about stuff that doesn't have lyrics in it. So, um, uh, you know, like I said, classical music or instrumental music, and just try to make it as random and a bit of a surprise for your friend or your family. Um, and let's just get going. And we're going to paint lines. So we're going to use all these different tools. So like I said, let's try Let's just try a paintbrush first because we're all kind of comfortable with that. So I'm gonna use a paintbrush and I'm gonna dip it into my dark paint. And with the music going, I'll give you time. You can pause this in a minute, but you can get your music playing. Um, I'll just demo a little bit here though first. I just want you to think about making um, lines on your paper. So I've got thick paint here that's kind of thinning out a little bit and drying off as I move along the paper. And then I'm really curious to see what this butter knife is going to do. So let's just get it loaded. <laughs> Remember, if you're not working with your parents to get permission uh, to use this kind of stuff uh, and see what the knife does. Oh, it's very squishy on the paper and it's making oh, interesting stuff. In fact, a knife is really cool because you can kind of scratch back through and make interesting lines like that, right? Fun. So play your music and make lines. Use as many different tools as you have around the house. And again, you can make straight lines. You can also make curvy lines. So use your imagination and let the music guide you because the reason I've asked you to pick out a different playlist, I'll give you a bit of a clue, is because music is a little bit like abstract art, especially music that doesn't have lyrics. Like think about a really rocking, you know, guitar solo or something like that. No one's telling you exactly what the guitar solo is meaning. No one's writing it out for you. So you, as the listener, need to interpret what the musician or the singer or songwriter is telling you through their music. So think about maybe these lines are a little bit like different instruments. So just put on some music and, you know, maybe, I don't know, five or six songs. So you're giving yourself 20 to 30 minutes and uh, just see how the music kind of guides you and press pause to this video and we'll get back for a little discussion and, uh, and see what we've done at the end. So how was that for you? How did you find it with the different music? Were you surprised that maybe some of your line making was influenced by the music you were listening to? Uh, I'd be really curious to hear um, about that. So if you want to just reach out, connect with me. I'd love to talk to you about your art making process. So lines, okay. So um, we've talked about how uh, earlier, how those sort of scribbles that we made um, really communicated ideas. Well, lines just like this communicate ideas as well. In fact, lines that are um, vertical like this um, often communicate ideas of uh, formality, strength, uh, growth, uh, yeah, things like that. Like if you think about that, you think about trees or maybe even skyscrapers or something, right? But with a little bit of magic, this is some of the things that I like to do because I'm kind of geeky about art, is if we just turn it now, the same set of lines, and we look at the lines horizontally, and suddenly they read completely different to me. I'm, I'm, I'm reading sort of landscape, and um, what I know to be, to be true for horizontal lines is they often read things like... Um, peace, or there's a sense of calm uh, with lines that are horizontal. And so those are clues that as a painter or an artist, I'm going to use these lines to convey an idea that I have for you. And then what about these kinds of lines, like, I don't know, wavy ones like this, you know, curvy wavy lines, what kind of things are these conveying? What are they, what messages are they sending us? Well, motion, right? Ideas of things in motion or movement. And even here, vertical lines that are curvy or curly might look 
or feel quite different than if they're presented to you horizontally. And then what if we took with these lovely curvy lines, if we took something like, oh, I don't know, like this big, huge black brush here, and we did something really dramatic, and we just went like that across the bottom here, or the bottom third. And that makes, you know, a message in and itself, right? It kind of feels like almost like that line is halting the motion or conveying something different. So there's so much power in something so simple as these lines that we've been making with the music today. And so it's not just the lines, but the second clue is direction. So we were talking about horizontal, and we were talking about vertical and curvy, and those um, are the, that's the element to call direction. So you've learned today through this art exercise, two really important clues that artists use to convey what they're um, wanting to um, express to you. So one was lines and the other one was direction. So I wanted to show you a few pieces of my own so we could just talk a little, a little bit more about this in greater depth. Here's an example of one of my pieces and you know you can really see line and direction I think in this piece. You can really see the sort of horizontal uh, direction here and lines here and then these little vertical lines that are moving up. But there's also this all these shapes, these big shapes, but um, they kind of feel like they're kind of pressing down on maybe this horizontal part or maybe preventing, or I'm not really sure. I, uh, you know, these lines coming up, I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Um, I just want you to take a look at it. And now that you've, um, you know, learned a little bit about direction and line, for you to make your own decision about how this painting makes you feel. Now with this one, there's definitely some vertical movement going on here, but I, I, I do remember that I spent quite a bit of time um, making more of sort of this horizontal movement. So there's like these sort of swashes of horizontal white going across all the way up to the top here. There's a little bit of line work here for maybe just to cause a little bit of tension, but there's just definitely has more of a horizontal kind of feel uh, to the piece. And again, I don't really want to tell you too much about this painting, I'd love for you to kind of um, come to your own conclusion on how this painting makes you feel. And, you know, now that you know a little bit more about direction and line, you can kind of use those as clues. Okay, so what's going on here? We've got this little swirl and we've got these marks that are kind of curved here. We've even got some circular marks and some squiggles. Motion, right? So I'm trying to convey motion with all of these um, sort of squiggly, squiggly, you know, curving lines. And also with this piece, there's a real clash of color. And I'm really glad that we got a chance to talk a little bit about that because that's what we're going to do in the next video together. We're going to really dive deep into color and how does color convey ideas. So we've learned today about line and we've learned today about direction. And maybe as a little homework assignment, you could take a look at some of the art around your house or in books or even online and see if you can figure out how the artist used line and direction to convey their ideas. Um, that holds true too for not just abstract work, but also for realistic work as well. So I hope you can join me for the next video. And if you've had some art, you've made some art that you'd like to share, you can use our uh, hashtag, which is share your art with us. You can also use um, the hashtag art apart PDA to share with the greater community. And again, I'm so pleased that you, uh, you know, you spent some time with me today and, and um, I'd like to hear from you. So please uh, reach out. And in the meantime, happy painting.